Horse Lyric was born in 1957 in New York City. He's an American multimedia and installation artist. He completed a Bachelor of Fine Arts at the California Institute for the Arts in 1979. His art covers a range from mediums working from with video, sculpture, installation, performance, and paintings. Video art in today's era is possibly the best way to deliver messages and emotions without actually having to say anything. More so than just by looking at one's video, people can actually feel a connection between the art and the artist. Growing up, Tony always found artistic value in things others would view as mundane or just normal. To him, however, things such as videos and sculptures had a certain aesthetic to them that others wouldn't take the time of day to consider. Often when I see people go into a museum, there's this statistic that they look at a painting for 1.5 seconds on average. And of course, with an installation or moving image, you kind of throw that off. But the beauty of it is, is to let it unfold. And the trick of art making, I guess, is to make it a comfortable space or an uncomfortable space, a dynamic space, let's call it that. I love to work with language in my work, but I also love to work with pictures, and so there's a balance between the two. Um, after a while, you get a sense what might work in, in terms of just straight imagery and what kind of works with language. And sometimes language can be even more precise than an image because it it goes right into the viewer's brain and then they are able to create a picture perfectly right there without me even having to do it okay when you see this language the interesting thing that happens is that you might actually hear it in your head and therefore the picture becomes part of your experience instantaneously but if i say Ha ha ha! Then I characterize it a little bit more for you, which may or may not be a good idea. So these new works uh, in my exhibition here basically um, come out of kind of look at ontological processes and some of the new technology and uh, research into that kind of the way that thought patterns can be isolated and thoughts can almost be read by functional MRIs and things like that so for example with iced it's meant to be sort of a memory palace um, which is based on uh, two psychological traits, one being narcissism, which has a kind of more of an art historical reference, and then the other being the phenomenon of the femme fatale, the uh, ice queen, which uh, sort of interfaces there. And so that's the way it was kind of built around this sort of personification of, of weather you know, and uh, the expansion of uh, psychological state into, uh, into the landscape. So you have a kind of a, a way of reading the work which operates in rhythms of the performances overlapping and one sort of train of thought leading into the next. I like to look at systems, and some of the systems I look at uh, are the way that a viewer might look at mimetic systems, that is, anything that kind of imitates real life. Now, that could be movies, holograms, video games, television, iPads, 
um, your phone. And in this work, I wanted to focus on the eye itself as the entry point, um, the contact between the physical space and the artwork. And within this, you see a little reflection of what the person is watching on their eye. Well, Tony Whistler is one of the leading artists of his time. He is one of the persons who actually emancipated the medium film as he brought it away from his, its, its, uh, its flat screen and he actually started to put it on objects, making, making video alive and making the objects alive. So a video three-dimensional and making the objects alive. I think that's one of his, his major um, contributions to contemporary art on one hand, but on the other hand, he's one of these persons who has really pushed um, the idea of, uh, of, of media, media as an idea itself within contemporary art and how it changes us, how it has an impact on our own perceptions and on the way that basically our brain is working. One of the things I really love about the Influence Machine is that what you're seeing at the moment may never be seen again in a, in a very real way because there's projections on smoke and trees and the grass and buildings and so forth. And the way these things combine, the way the wind moves the smoke and the smoke um, kind of stretches the images in different ways. Um, so there's a kind of reading which is a kind of heightened sense of the moment, which I really love about it and that as people move through it, um, they're able to pick that up. When technologies kind of first happen, there's a, there's a kind of magic moment where they're not fixed. And I became kind of fascinated with that. So like, I kind of grew up in the multimedia milieu in a kind of, um, pop cultural setting, as we all do, which was saturated with uh, technology, radios, telephones, TVs, cinemas. And of course, that's what I gravitated to, but I also was very interested in painting and the history of painting. Uh, not really thinking that some of these other technologies could be used to make art. As you can see, Technology's evolution throughout the past 20 to 25 years has had a huge impact on Tony's career, not just as an artist, but as a person too. Tony expresses the fact that he's fascinated with the possibilities of how video and sound and technology can all work together coherently to create a form of art. As an artist though, it's hard to stray from the traditional paintings and pictures. However, through the use of projections, Tony can alter that realm of immersion into an almost three-dimensional plane. This is a staple of Tony's form of art and how technology can become art itself. A common question that has been posed before is to what really counts as art? And some people will classify it as to just pictures and paintings. But today, however, we've learned that this can be argued. Two questions that I want to propose to the class are the following. How has technology influenced or changed art in today's era and how it has affected society.